Okay, Megovan and everyone, and welcome back to another uh, AI dungeon <clears throat> more wind adventure with Felagar. So I'm going to continue. Oh look, I like how it, it's okay, it gave a little synopsis, but you can read that uh, later and you can pause it. Um, okay, so I remember last episode, we uh, the way it started off, uh, Felagar, which is me, defeated... Uh, it was a group of goblins, I believe, and uh, the captain, was his name, Captain Aldous, I, I can't remember, but um, uh, extended an invitation for me to join uh, the Legion, Imperial Legion. I had to decline, of course, because I was a mage, uh, and then I stumbled into these ruins uh, and, <clears throat> and encountered some statues, they were like guardians. Uh, and there was a box on a, uh, I think it was like a pedestal or altar or something. And I opened it and there was a magic amulet in there. And it looks like, let me see. Uh, as you lift the amulet from the box, you can feel the power coursing through, through it. The gemstone in its center seems to be pulsing with energy as if it's alive. You carefully fasten the amulet around your neck, feeling its weight against your skin. As uh, soon as the clasp clicks into place, you feel a surge of power. The amulet seems to merge with your being, its magic pulsing through your veins like a second heartbeat. You feel a newfound sense of strength, a, a boost in your magical prowess that allows you to tap into your reservoir of magic with greater ease and precision. Okay, so... Um, why did it say this twice? You feel an increased connection. Okay. Uh, so I'll just continue at this point. Um, the ancient esoteric language etched into the box's surface shimmers for a brief moment, as if acknowledging the new bond between you and Amulet. Now feeling more empowered and prepared, you take a deep breath and ponder your next move. The temple remains quiet, except for the distant echoes of the wild blowing uh, through the desolate ashlands. Okay. Good. Wait. Echoes of the wind blowing. It's the wind. Uh, the M. Oh, wait. One second. Shit. Okay. Uh, the amulet feels warm against your skin. A comforting presence that seems to resonate with your own magic. What? You take a moment to study the intricate carvings on the temple's walls, noting that, noticing that they depict scenes from... Okay, I thought I read this already, but... They, they depict scenes from ancient rituals and battles against various supernatural enemies. It's clear that this place held great significance for the long-forgotten civilization that built it. Oh. As you continue to examine the carvings, you notice a, a peculiar pattern that repeats itself throughout the temple. A symbol, symbol, symbol of a six-pointed star surrounded by intricate knotwork. The symbol seems to radiate an aura of power as if it's connected to the same energy source as the amulet. Intrigued, you decide to study the symbol further, tracing its outline with your fingers. Uh, as you trace the outline, of the six-pointed star, you feel a faint tingling sensation in your fingertips. The symbol seems to resonate with the amulet's energy, humming softly in response to your touch. The carvings on the wall begin to glow faintly, revealing that the six-pointed star is a local point of several interconnected lines and shapes. Also, by the way, it is September 19, 2024, and big shout out to my good friend Grumpy Scamp. Uh, he insinuated that um, 
at some point he wants to do an AI dungeon uh, let's play so to be quite honest I'm super super excited um, you know to go on his adventures and, and to see that um, or to go on those adventures uh, with him uh, and I think he mentioned he might even want to do this the Marwind one I think he said he tried it once before but I'm not sure uh, so hopefully he will actually do Marwind Okay, the symbol now, illuminated, appears to be a magical ward of sorts. Its pattern re weaving together strands of energy like a complex web. As you focus your magical senses on the ward, you detect an intricate flow of energy. It pulses rhythmically, intertwining with the temple's ambient magic and the amulet's own power. Oh, now we are, we are lingering too much on the amulet and the symbols and stuff. I would like to move away from that, but um, uh, let me see. The temple. Oh, the temple. I meant temple. Oh, it understood. As you look around the dimly lit temple, your eyes adjust to the subtle play of shadows and light. The intricate carvings on the walls. Yeah, let's move away from that. I think I've gathered enough information. I get it, you know. Now partially illuminated, seem to dance and shift as if they hold secrets of their own. You notice that the polished stone floor beneath your feet is inlaid with similar six-pointed star symbols connecting to form a vast interconnected web of energy. Um, let's see where this is going. The ancient shrine has an air of... I, I know this word solemn, but... Solemnity? Solemnity, solemnity and wisdom uh, with a faint scent of age and dust permeating the air. Uh, aside from the central altar, a few pedestals and smaller altars adorn the room, holding mysterious artifacts and offerings. Upon further inspection, you notice more stone warriors standing guard at various points within the temple. Oh, I don't want those ones coming to life, but... I mean, maybe because I'm wearing the amulet, it will protect me or not bring them to life, hopefully. More stone statues. Uh... Adorn the room. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to be too greedy with that, you know, taking everything. Um, move away. Uh, else, leave altar room. Let's get away from this room. Let's get out of here. You take a deep breath, feeling the weight of your newfound power and the ancient wisdom that surrounds you in this shrine. Carefully, you step away from the altar, your footsteps echoing softly against the polished stone floor. The tingling sensation in your fingertips lingers, reminding you of the magical power f of the powerful magical word you discovered. Okay, great. Uh, you know what? Uh, Check my inventory. Let me see what I have. Everything, you know? I, I'm really not sure everything I have. Uh, as you glance at your inventory, you see the enchanted amulet resting against your chest, of course. Its gemstone with still glows with a faint, pulsating light. Other than that, your inventory consists of the clothing on your back, a small pouch containing various mundane items. What are these mundane items, though? 
a few scraps of food and a staff imbued with basic magical properties um, um, the magical properties of the staff As you focus your attention on the staff, you feel a gentle hum of energy resonating through its length. The wooden shaft and intricately carved stone head seem to be infused with a subtle yet potent magical aura. Carefully, you begin to analyze the staff's properties. You determine that the staff is imbued with several minor enchantments. Well, now please, don't keep asking me to... What are these... Several oops, minor enchantments. I suppose it would be safe, right? You concentrate on the staff, channeling your channeling your magical senses to discern the specific enchantments within. Like, shouldn't I know this? After a moment of focus, you identify the following minor enchantments on the staff: light. A simple yet useful enchantment that generates a small but sufficient light source at the tip of the staff, aiding you in navigating dark places. Why is it like, can I click on that? Oh, okay. Well, and then it just says two. What is the second minor enchantment? The second minor enchantment on the staff is a magical barrier. The enchantment creates a faint temporary ward around you when activated, absorbing a small amount of magical damage and deflecting simple spells cast your way. As you ponder the capabilities, capabilities of your enchanted staff, you realize it could serve as a valuable tool in your journey. You know what? Absolutely it can. Okay, um... You know, and what are these? Exactly what these each mundane item I have in inventory. You know, I would like to know. A small, well-worn leather pouch containing various coins of imperial currency. Yes, septums, gold, silver, and a few copper pieces. I was never aware <laughs> that. Uh, to me, it was just septums. They didn't break them down into gold, silver, and a few copper, I think. Uh, this was the currency in... Um, I'm trying to remember now... Uh, was it Dragon Age where they did it this way? I can't remember, but it's like gold is, think of it, gold is like, I don't know how to put it, but, you know, just like how we have nickels, dimes, quarters, you know, dollars, things like that, you know. So, like, now I'm not saying this is true, but let's just say uh, a thousand silver equals one gold, you know, that kind of thing, you know, and coppers, you, you know, like that, but... I forgot what game it was where it uh, dealt like that. I want to say dealt in this kind of currency. I want to say it was Dragon Age, like Inquisition, but I feel like I could be wrong. Uh, I have empty water skin. It's leathery, slightly cracked, but still holding liquid well, okay? A handful of whey bread, hard tack, like biscuits that provide substance in your travels. So, bis biscuits, biscuits, hard tack. So, they're probably um, like stale biscuits or something. They're hard. And I have a fourth thing. You know what? Forget it. Let's just continue. That's enough, you know. Oh, what the? 
A flint and steel set, useful for starting fires in damp or dry conditions. Uh, a length of strong coarse rope. Flint and steel. Starting fires. That's good. A length of strong coarse rope, ideal for various tasks such as climbing or securing items. A small sharp knife, its blade simple but effective for various utility purposes. A handful of lockpicks, crafted with precision and care capable of opening many basic locks. So I have lock picks, sharp knife, uh, coarse rope. Okay. Okay, so move into another room of the temple. Oh, you know what? Let's just get out of here. This is not interesting to me. Uh, leave temple. I understand that, you know, the more I keep hitting continue, it, it will kind of linger on certain things. And it's always, as I said before in the first episode, it will procedurally uh, generate something. And it kind of takes into account what you say. So, um, you know, keep that in mind as well. Uh, as you leave the ancient shrine, the heavy door, the wooden door creaks behind, closed behind you, sealing the wisdom and power held within. You know, I have the amulet, I'm good with that. The sun casts its warm embrace upon your face as you take a deep breath, filling your lungs with the arid air of the ashlands. You turn to face the desolate landscape where rolling dunes and scattered vegetation stretch as far as you can see, as I can see. Uh, look at, oops, map of Vardenfell. That is how you spell it, I believe. How would this, how would they do this? You carefully unfold a worn and slightly weathered map of Vardenfell, your fingers tracing the parchment as you take in the various regions and landmarks etched upon it. The ashlands where you currently stand is a vast expanse of barren wasteland dotted with the occasional settlement like Aldron and Margan. Well, you know what? What I feel like to do? See, if I... I want to give you... This is a perfect example. I could continue the story and it will put up, you know... It will generate something. Um, maybe even an encounter, you know? But... If I take a turn, depending on how I phrase it, let's say if I say like go down the road or something like that, it can um, prolong my journey. However, if I just say something like head to Balmora, it will either put me midway through or possibly even say I'm already there and make me enter it. I'm sure, right? I'm just guessing now, but going by my limited knowledge of AI Dungeon and how this has been working so far. Let's see. Which is cool. You, in a way, you kind of control the story, you know, and this whole AI is the DM. As you prepare to depart to Balmora, you adjust your pack, ensuring the enchantment, enchanted staff and your other belongings are securely stowed. With a sense of purpose, you set off towards the southeast. So that so it gives me an idea of where I am. So I, I'm picturing the map right now. So Balmora, so I'm probably upper... Is that maybe possibly toward something like Caldera or, um, you know, uh, and I'm thinking if I was a little bit more east, north, slightly north and east, that would be where Punabi and Sulipand, and I, I really only know that because, or remember that because uh, I recently just came out of that area in, uh, in my 1000 subscriber special, but um so nor okay wait a minute where you set off towards southeast following the well-worn path through the ashlands i thought it said south it did it with a sense of purpose, you set off toward the southeast, following the well. Oh, so maybe it's it is like I'm I'm coming from uh, around that area. 
right? Uh, the, the Punabi and the Sulapand area, somewhere around there. There's like lava in that area. Uh, the journey to Balmor is long but rewarding. The arid air offers its own starky, stark beauty with sculpted dunes and unusual heat-resistant flora. Of course, yeah. Take a turn. No, no, I don't mean that. Continue. No, take a turn. Whoops. Uh, after a few hours of walking, you spot Balmora's familiar stucco and clay buildings in the distance. Oh, and it's it's great because say if I'm a person who never played Morrowind, you know this gives me just a you know a basic idea of how it looks like in there. Um, think of something like. Uh, uh, Tatooine, you know, those kind of houses, something like that. But because I'm familiar with the game, you know, I, you know, I, I can um, apply more detail in my imagination of what I see, right? Uh, the Ode River, yeah, yeah. A vital source of life in this harsh region glimmers under the sun as it flows gently through the city. And you see barges and fishing boats navigating the waterway. Balmora is divided into four districts, each with its its unique character. Okay, um, I don't really have anything to sell, so now I will take a turn. I will say, go into Mage's Guild. As you enter the Mage's Guild of Balmora, you're greeted by the cool embrace of shade and a faint smell of arcane reagents <clears throat> the high vaulted ceiling supports intricate crystal chandeliers casting prismatic light throughout the hall these are things you don't get you know when you're playing when you actually are playing the elder scrolls 3 morrowind right uh you get all this uh visual uh, you know, much like there's a mod in Daggerfall uh, that um, puts descriptive words when you enter something. You know, they're just small sentences, but it's enough to, you know, convey, you know, what you're seeing, smelling, feeling. Uh, to your left, you see a long, polished wooden counter where guild members can purchase potions, ingredients, and magical items. That's to my left, huh? Okay. Uh, potions. You know. Okay. Go to the counter on the left. I think I I asked uh, the um. Well, whatever I was going to call them shopkeeper, but uh, what do you call them? The um, just the mage over there. Um. Uh, the Enchanter, I'm sure, maybe is what they're called. He might be called. He might be the Enchanter. See if you can uh, better identify that amulet, right? Uh, as you approach the counter, a middle-aged Dunmer woman with striking crimson eyes looks up uh, from her ledger, offering a polite nod. Sergio, welcome to the Balmora Mages Guild. How may I assist you today? This is exactly like in more ways. Welcome to the Mages Guild, but I don't know if they say that part, um, but they do say, how may I assist you today? You know, you can kind of hear it in the, the distance, and you, you turn to the direction, you hear it, and it's, you know, someone. Uh, her voice carries the familiar lilt of the local Velafi dialect. You glance at the various potions, ingredients, ingredients, and magical items displayed behind the counter. Uh... So there's a middle-aged Dunmer woman. Uh, say. Greetings, my lady. Could you please identify the magical, the precise magical effects of this amulet, 
please. I love it. I love it. You know what I should do is actually, um, it's said for my money, I have various gold and silver and all that. I, I should see specifically how much. The Dunmer woman, taken aback by your polite and formal address, sets her ledger aside and takes the amulet from your outstretched hand. She studies it carefully, her eyes scan scanning the intricate enchantments etched into the gemstone. After a moment, she looks back up at you, her expression serious. Ah, this is a fascinating piece indeed. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Tell me more. Uh, she turns the amulet over, admiring the craftsmanship. This amulet is enchanted to boost its wearer's magical resistance and ability. Okay, so it, it was kind of telling me that. I just thought it was being, like, generic, but... Um, I thought there was more to it than that, but... It boosts the wearer's magical resistance and... You see, and ability? Okay, making it an invaluable tool for any mage or spellcaster, which I am. Uh, the gemstone's inner light is a testament of its power, and its intricate design suggests it was crafted by a skilled artisan. Uh, so basically, where is my, it boosts the, my uh, resistance and ability. So maybe just it, you know, Bretons already have uh, an inborn um, or innate a resistance to magic so it does it it gives me more magical resistance so that's great so basically probably whatever spell I cast uh, it will uh, boost it you know it will you know enhance it in some way uh, okay do okay how, how much uh, currency exactly do I have no I don't want to say you assess your inventory and find that you currently possess 175 septums but see there we go and the cur currency used in Weidenfell and the rest of Marwind and pretty much all Elder Scrolls as far as I know right uh, these coins jiggle gently as you move, a subtle reminder of your financial means. With this amount, you can make several purchases from the Mages Guild or other vendors in Balmora, ensuring that you are well equipped for your journey ahead. Okay, um, so now, take a turn. I would say... What is your name, my lady? Uh, my apologies for not introducing myself earlier, the Dunmer woman says, smiling slightly. I am Talgara. This is so great. I'm sure it just did something, I don't know what, maybe it has a built-in name generator. and uh, The Balmora Mages Guild, or maybe it really is a person in the Mages Guild, but I don't recall coming across her there. Uh, supply Quartermaster. Okay. I handle inventory and sell magical items and ingredients to our guild members and visitors. So she does not sell spells. Uh, her crimson eyes gleam with curiosity as she studies you, weighing your magical prowess based on your attire and the enchanted amulet you presented. Okay, okay. Uh, I will take a turn and I will ask, how much do I owe you Oops. for identifying the amulet oh god I hope it's not expensive you know uh, Telgara slightly surprised shakes her head no need for compensa compensation Suryo Suryo I think I heard them say this word in passing when I play Marwin but I just I couldn't make it out I'm like you know no no Sarah you know when they say that I heard um, I think they call me uh, Muthsera or something like that, oh, Muthsera or Sera or something like that, but Suryo, I don't know this, Sergio. Identifying enchanted items is a service we provide here. However, if you're interested, I can offer you a discount on any items you may wish to purchase in return 
for sharing more about where you obtained such a unique amulet. As you consider your proposition, you notice a section of the guild's hall reserved for spell casting and magical training. Okay. Um, I found it in an old ruin. I was heading south, uh, southeast, so. Um, wait a minute. Oh, so I was wrong. When I said I'm headed, when I was heading south, wait. Okay, yeah, south. Oh, no, no, okay, never mind. I forget that. Uh, southeast, so it would be like. Yeah, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking too hard, like I, I'm making sure north, northeast from here with many statues and uh, with many statues and etchings on the wall. Tell the guildmaster to send an, it, are they called an envoy? Envoy. Oh no, no, and that's, what, what do you call this? Uh, to send, send an ex, what do you call those? Uh, to send, I guess, scholars to further study this place. I found it in an old ruin northeast from here with many statues and etchings on the wall. You could tell the guildmaster to send scholars to further study this place. Telgara's eyes widen with intrigue and she nods, making a mental note. Thank you for the information, Sergio. Sergio. I, I don't know if it's all everywhere that they pronounce the J like a Y. You'll notice that, like Jarl, right? J A R L, but it's Jarl. Or here is it with a J. I'll just still for now call it Sergio. I will certainly pass this on to the Guildmaster. The prospect of uncovering a hidden ruin with untapped magical knowledge is most enticing. She then points toward the training area. Feel free to use our spell casting facilities if you wish to practice. Okay, and I'll say, whom can I purchase spells from? Telgara smiles, pleased with your interest. You can purchase spells from our guild's spell merchant, merchants, Sergio. They can be found in the training area Telgara pointed out earlier. Uh, they offer a wide variety of spells from destructive fireballs and lightning bolts to more subtle spells like invisibility, charm, and healing. Okay, um, again, what spell did I have? Was it just a... Uh, Was it just a fire bolt? Uh, check what spells I know. Yeah. I forgot, but okay, so now I have fireball, okay. And magical barrier, which uh, uh, came from my amulet, right? Protecting you from harm. Okay. And what did my staff do? Wait. The staff channeling 
You identify the following. Oh, okay, it has staff. Oh, and magical barrier. So I should know the light spell. So light and magical barrier. Okay. Um, okay. Go to talk to the spell merchant in the training area. Okay, very good, very good. I think after I buy my spells, it would be a good place for me to end it. As you approach the spell merchants in the training area, you notice their white robe and scholarly appearance. They look up and acknowledge your presence with a welcoming nod. Greetings, Sergio. I am Haderas, the Balmora Mages Guild resident spell merchant. How may I assist you? The training area uh, is filled with aspiring mages practicing their spells and protecting their craft. Okay. Um, what spells do you have available for sale? For sale. Uh, Handaris, the spell merchant, raises an eyebrow at your question and then gestures towards a large wooden board hanging on the wall behind him. Take a look at our selection, Sergio. Uh, we have a wide variety of spells available for purchase, ranging, ranging from elementary spells to more advanced and specialized ones. He points at the board where numerous magical symbols are carefully inscribed, each one representing a different spell. Read board for available spells for sale. Okay, here we go. Uh, watch as you carefully study the board filled with magical symbols, each one representing a different spell he has available for sale. He waits patiently, allowing you to browse the list of spells at your own pace. The board contains um, spells in various categories, with elementary spells at the top and more specialized powerful spells further down. Okay, let's continue. They are. That's what I should have done the last time. But this is all you. Okay, let's continue the list. Oh, this is super fantastic! Wow. Keep it going. Uh, we have fire bolt. This basic destruction spell launches a small bolt of flames at your target, causing minor fire damage. A useful spell for beginners. Learning the art of destruction. Well, I have fire ball, but I don't think I need fire bolt. I might want to try a different element. Uh, healing, a simple restoration spell that restores a small amount of health to the caster. An essential spell for any aspiring healer or mage. I could use that. Light, uh, well, I have that already on my staff. Chain lightning. This lightning spell branches out, striking multiple targets and causing damage to each. It's, it's wide area of effect and makes it a formidable, formidable offensive spell. Ooh, greater healing, a more potent restoration spell than its basic counterpart. This one restores a more significant amount of health to the caster. It provides valuable in combat. It proves valuable in combat and when healing severe injuries. Flaming Spear, an alteration spell that creates a flaming spear in the caster's hand dealing fire damage to the target upon impact. It, offer, it offers an alternative to the traditional fireball spell, useful in melee combat. Well, I'm more of a traditional mage, so... A traditional mage. So... How much is... Healing spell...
greater healing spell and chain lightning. Hadaris, the spell merchant, glances at the board and back. The fireball spell is priced at 50 septims. And how much did I have? Oof. I have 175. Ouch. Uh, greater healing is at 100, and chain lightning spell is 150. These are our current prices, Sergio. I have 175. Holy crap. Holy sh... Well, I asked for also the healing spell. How much is that? Just the healing spell. <clears throat> Not the greater. A simple but essential restoration spell is available for the modest price of 50 septim Suryo. His fingers trace over the symbol representing the spell on the wooden board. For only a small investment, you can harness its power and ensure your well-being in the challenging lands of Morrowind. Okay, and I have 175. This is good. Now, let's just see if it will actually keep track of, you know, my gold. So I should have 125 left. So let's see. Take a turn. Oops. Oops. Before 50 septims. <clears throat> Nods as he notices your decision and carefully removes the healing spell from the board. He then extends his open palm towards you, presenting the newly acquired spell. Here you go, Sergio. The healing spell is now yours, ready for you to utilize it as you, f as you deem fit. Okay, so I'm about to end it. I just want to... Uh, Examine how much gold do I have. I should have capitalized the I, but I don't know if it really makes a, a difference. Wait. Wait. I don't understand. You open your pouch, carefully counting the septums inside. After a moment of calculation, you determine that you currently possess 450 septums. With the recent purchase of the healing spell for 50 septums, you now have 400 septums. But, unless, wait, did it say gold? Oh, uh, you assess your inventory and find that you currently possess 175 septums. Something is wrong. I wonder what would happen if I ask this. Earlier you you said I had hundred seventy five septums. My apologies for the confusion. You open your pouch, carefully counting the septums inside. Uh, after a moment of calculation, you determine that you currently possess 175 septums. With the recent purchase of the healing spell for 50 septums, you now have 125. Look, that's better. I don't know what happened there. That. Save. 
save game just to be sure but keep an eye out for more valuable items okay what spells do I know No, I'm not asking that. Uh, show me... Okay. Look at my known spell list. Fireball, healing, good, good. And I should have that magic barrier, which is on the item. It's kind of weird, a magical barrier, you know. Why would it list it before? Uh, anyways, that is it. This is this is very cool so far. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And just keep in mind, everyone, it will be an absolute slow burn, as you can see. No fights this time around. And really, with the exception of uh, last episode, you know, with the exception of the opening fight against those... Uh, uh, goblins uh, there really wasn't any fight so um, you know no no fighting and, and stuff this is truly an RPG you know so I hope you guys enjoyed still nonetheless and see you